Hi guys, in today's video, we're going to be looking at joint variation, also known as joint proportion. So we'll be looking at two direct variations or two inverse variations. And finally, we'll take a look at a mixture of one direct variation and one inverse variation. In joint variation, we say that when a quantity y varies directly or inversely as more than one other quantity. This is when we call it a joint variation. It is joint with more than one other quantity. So we today we'll be looking at two direct variations first. This can also be written as when a quantity y is directly proportional or inversely proportional to more than one other quantity. It means the same thing. So when there are two direct variations, when a quantity y is directly proportional to or varies directly as x and z, these are two other quantities, this is how we write it. If you haven't seen the direct variations video, the link is at the corner of the video. This is how you this is a proportional to sign. So we write it as y is proportional to x multiplied by z. And then when we want to make it into an equation, we need to add the constant of proportionality or the variation constant k. So it will become y equals to kxz. Let's try this. Write the following relations with the proportionality symbol. So a, q varies directly as p and r. So in, in a direct variation, we just have to write proportional to P times R. Y is proportional to P times R. X is directly proportional to A square and K cubed. So we write X is proportional to A square multiplied by K cubed. Square root of T varies directly as Y and M square. So we write square root of T is proportional to Y multiplied by M square. Let's try a question. So given that x is directly proportional to y square and z, and x is 24 when y is 2 and z is 3, find the value of z when x is 5 and y is 1. So I've gone through the method with you for direct variation and inverse variation. If you haven't seen inverse variation, the link is in the corner. So the same method applies here. The first thing that we always have to do is to find the relationship between all the unknowns. And to find that relationship, we just have to find the equation. The equation is the relationship between all the unknowns. So first we find the equation. Write down the relationship first. So x is directly proportional to y squared multiplied by z. Then we insert the proportionality constant to make it an equation x equals to k y square z. Rearrange to make k the subject of the equation, we get x over y squared times z. And then we insert the values that are given to us. So x is 24 when y is 2, so we have 2 squared, and z is 3 times 3. Now the answer you should get is k is equals to 2. Once we get the value of k, we can substitute it back into the original equation. And so we get x is equals to 2y square z. Now this is the relationship that we are looking for. Now we can solve other questions. So find the value of z when x is 5 and y is 1. So we use the equation that we just found. We substitute the values of x and y that's given to us. So rearrange to make z the subject of the equation because we want to find the value of z. Substitute the values of x is 5 and y is 1 and the answer we should get is 2.5 Now what about two inverse variations? So when a quantity y is inversely proportional or varies inversely as x and z We write it as y is proportional to 1 over x multiplied by z So as long as it's inversely proportional, we will write the values, the unknowns, we will write the unknowns in the denominator. That's how it works. If it's directly proportional, we write it as a numerator of the fraction. 
on the other side of the proportionality. So if it is inversely proportional, it is the denominator of the fraction. So when we want to make it into an equation, we have to add the variation constant or proportionality constant k and it becomes y equals to k over xz. Once we find this, we need to find the value of k. Let's try this. So write the following relations with the proportionality symbol. Q varies inversely as P and R. The moment you see inversely, you know that these belong in the denominator. So we got Y is proportional to 1 over PR. And X is inversely proportional to A square and K cube. So we get X proportional to 1 over A square times K cube. Square root of T varies inversely as Y and M square. So square root of T proportional to 1 over y times m squared. Let's try a question. So given that x is inversely proportional to y squared and z cubed, and x is 1 when y is 3 and z is 2. So as always, the first thing you always do is find the relationship between all the unknowns in the form of an equation. Find the value of z when x is 9 and y is 1. So first we need to get our equation. Write down the proportionality. X is proportional to 1 over y square and z cube because it is inversely proportional. Then we add the proportionality, yeah, proportionality constant to make it an equation. So we get x equals to k over y square z cube. Rearrange to make k the subject of the equation. We get k equals to x times y square times z cube. Substitute the values that were given to us. So x is 1 y is 3, 3 squared, and z is 2, 2 cubed. So here we should get 72. Once you find the value of k, substitute back into the original equation and we get x equals to 72 over y squared z cubed. Once we have our equation here relating all the unknowns, we can solve for other unknowns. And we write the equation, make z cubed the subject of the equation because later we want to find the value of z. And then we substitute the values of x equals to 9 and y equals to 1. And what we get is 8. So when we want to find z, we need to cube root both sides. So z is equal to cube root of 8, which is equal to 2. So when we have a joint variation where we have one direct and one inverse variation, Let's look at the example. Q varies inversely as P. So we know P goes to the denominator and directly as R. So we know that R goes to the numerator. So we get Y is proportional to R because it's directly over P because it's inversely as P. This is how we do it. So X is inversely proportional to A square and directly proportional to K square. So Inversely proportional to a square. a square goes to the denominator. Directly proportional to k cube. So k cube goes to the numerator. Y is proportional to k cube over a square. Square root of t varies directly as y. If it varies directly, y is going to go to the numerator and inversely as m square. So m square will be the denominator. So square root of t is proportional to y over m square. Given that x square is directly proportional to y and inversely proportional to the square root of z, and x is 3 when y is 2 and z is 16, find the value of y when x is 3 and z is 36. Whenever we want to solve anything, we need to find the equation first, always. So let's do the variation. x square is proportional to y over square root of z because it is inversely proportional to square root of z, directly proportional to y. Then we add the proportionality constant k. Once we want, we want to find the value of k, rearrange to make k the subject, substitute the values of z. z is 36, z is 16, sorry, and x is 3, y is 2. And we should get the value k is equals to 18. Once we get k is 18, we substitute back into the equation. Now we have our equation. x squared equals to 18y over square root of z. And now we can solve for the value of y. So to find the value of y, we make y the subject of the equation. So y will be equals to, we substitute the values of z and x into the equation. 
Z is 36 and X is 3. And we should get Y is equals to 3. That's all for this video guys. If you've learned something, please hit the like button and subscribe to learn even more next time. I'll see you in the next video.